over into Counter-Strike just from the random drawings that have been going on. But it's quite exciting. They're playing on Overpass. What do you think? Yeah, I think I, I kind of side with what the analyst desk are saying right now. Coming into this, I was kind of skeptical. They have played a lot of maps, but I think that Optic came out ahead on this one. Overpass is a map that they're very comfortable on, that they should have. They, they, they have their system. We've seen NAF had nuts games, game of his careers basically, career basically on this map. So, I mean, not that I expect NAF to just go you know, crazy again, but I think that Optic have the edge going up against FaZe. It's going to come down to the preparation that Kerrigan has had and whether he decided to prepare for Overpass or not. Let's see if that's going to be working out. I am going to have to go with FaZe just because of the Danish connection that's going on there. I've got Faze no up. choice, really. Oh, Mixwell, though, shutting down Rain. What a great start. And now they're going to go on to discover a nearly undefended bomb site here. But that seems to be the plan for Optic. They're just saying, that's fine. We can retake this four versus five. But Alu picking up a kill. It's going to be going down to Mixwell next. It's still a four on three here. The health on Rush is not that great. And we'll see FaZe. Can they handle the after plant scenario? AC is actually sneaking in behind the connector. This is such a great play. He's going to get the kill on Stanislaw. And now the smoke goes down from Rush. Try and see if they can get that defuse in. Mixwell still doing work. Getting a kill. Nafly gone. Mixwell, fourth kill for him. And now he's going to go for the defuse. AC, can he stop it? He picks up one. And now he's got the Triple Mixwell on the other side looking for the ace. They're just starting back and forth. It'll be the quad kill for AZ to save it for FaZe Clan. What an explosive pistol round. Quad versus quad. Whoever to picked it up would have got the ace. That's nuts. That's the kind of star we're looking for here between both of these teams, Anders, with the history between the brands, sure, but now between the rosters as well, considering the, how often they've run into each other. This is sick. Man. I, I don't think that this is going to be one-sided optic. Just because the last time these two teams played, it wasn't that long. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. It was in E League season two. They played Overpass, and it was a 16-12 win for for Optic. But I still favor Optic. That's that's way too close to call. Like that's if it goes down to a one v one like that, it's too close to call. It wasn't decisive for either side. Oh no, definitely not. Um, that smoke on the on the bomb there. If AZ doesn't get the kill through it, then he's just in an awful position. But it did work out at the end. And now they've got a pretty good stack going on at the B-bomb side. And what I especially like is that Nafly has that one flashbang. So if they try and walk in here, it's down to Naf's timing, I think. If he puts out a good flashbang, they can probably pick up one or two kills while the flash is still in effect. Mm. And then they maybe even steal a rifle. So I would I put the camera on him right now. That's the that's the main importance right now. Tarek and Mixwell are over at the A restrooms just making sure that no one sneaks into the A-bomb site for free. But it could well be an A, uh, B hit here. It's yeah. looking like it. Bomb is waiting outside a monster. All five players here for FaZe as well. They've played it very patiently, FaZe. The whole strat here is just, we're going to sit and wait. We don't care if we give up mid. We don't care if we give up long. We're waiting to see if uh, they're going to push, and then we're just going to go for a timing and not fly. First man to die. The flash is down, but Stanislaw is there to spray down AZ. Doing damage, Stanislaw. Two kills for him. He's still alive. And nearly gets the third as well, but all will spray him down. In, in pretty much every way, a completely asinine flashbang that was being thrown. I have no idea what the plan was. That was set up so nicely, and then he did nothing with it. Tarek still in effect, though. Going to be in a one-on-two here. Deagle close range. They're just hiding through the smoke. So, you know, Tarek really wants to fight, but Kiyoshima says no. And now time has just run out. He hasn't got a kit and no armor, so it's very hard to play a 1v2 like this. Carrigan will take him out, and FaZe will win the second round. But so, look, I mean, this is the problem, right? He throws that flashbang into the monster tunnel, but there's no one there that can that can sort of back him up, right? His teammates are all right behind him. If they if his two teammates had been near the monster tunnel, mm -hmm. then by all means, throw that flashbang down there and go and peek in the tunnel. But at this point, all that flashbang would have ever done is put a bit of a delay between maybe the first two people coming in and the last two. And in a round where you're fighting pistols versus rifles, that is not worth it. So just wait until they get up onto the site and pop it there and see what happens. Bad nap fly. Uh, it's not uh, not really gelling there, unfortunately, for them. But one thing to, no to note here is that Optic didn't go for Kevlar in the last round, and they are prioritizing the fourth round by. So they, they go ahead and spend some money on deagles, etc. But in the meantime, they are definitely saving so that they have a maximum number of nades to work with in the next round so that Mixwell can comfortably pick up his AWP. So this is, uh, FaZe have to be a bit careful because they lost a little bit more than they wanted in the last round. There was still three kills for Optic, so it was an expensive round. They aren't going to have the best economy going into the big buy round here, FaZe. And certainly not if they lose it, so... 
We'll see. It's going to be the hard rotate now for Optic Gaming up onto the A site. A little bit delayed, but still, they're definitely putting the pain on Rain. He's down to 3 HP. Oh, Kerrigan. Okay, Triple spray down right then and there. I mean, good stack for Optic, but just didn't have the firepower to really stand up to it. Kerrigan. The quad makes more very low on health, hiding on the other side. And now, where the smoke has gone, the thing is just going to get very bad. That's a quad kill for Carrigan. But a glory for him at the end of that round. 3-0 for Optic, but still very early days. Now it gets interesting. Let's see what they can do when they have all these rifles. That's kind of the painful thing for Carrigan. Yes, he gets a quad kill, but he had two teammates with MAC-10s. Why aren't they getting the quad kill? Why aren't they making the mad money? What's up with that? It's true, it's true. But I, at the same time, I feel like he was forced into shooting, you know? He, he had no choice. He had no choice. All right, full buy for both teams now, though. This is where it gets fun. But lots of nades for Optic to work with here due to them managing their economy going into it. Still only a single kit on Rush, but Mixwell has his op, and he's fully equipped behind it as well. There's the boost, and there's the shot. Good night, Kiyoshima. Time to take a nap. Mixwell, and he's already moving out. Boosted on B, but then he's instantly rotating up to A, get that op into a different position, and really throw phase for a loop. I wonder if we get the replay of actually Rain's grenade made it, the flashbang that he threw. I think it, it was off to just a little bit. Stan has got his back turned, expecting someone to run through that smoke and flash their way through, but it hasn't happened yet. Four versus five, and uh, I mean, there's still so much time left on this uh, round, so Optic, they're very defensive now. You can tell that they got what they came for, and now they're just going to be waiting. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be managing their nades as well. Look at this, still so many grenades to work with. AZ's gonna get the perfect timing to catch Rush rotating towards Monster. Interesting, looks like they wanted to get that crossfire set up, which is a pretty popular setup for Optic on the CT side of B. They like to get two players holding by Monster to really crush any kind of push coming in from there. Not this time though, Rush gets put down. But there are still three players active on the A site right now for Optic. If FaZe commit to this, they're gonna be running into a bit of a tight spot. They still have a good nade count though to actually get an execute going. Three smoke grenades and a Molotov on Kerrigan. It's a lot to work with going into this push. Mixwell, he's so out in the open. I was getting worried for a moment there. They come through the smoke just when he falls back. Tarek gonna be out of it. Mixwell, he needs back up, but he needs it quickly. Molotov goes onto him. He's gonna go down. That's Rain with the pickoff. Very important kills, and Rain gonna continue. Stan is low. Can't do anything. Not even sure why he's hanging around here. Maybe just looking for the exits, but this is an important feature as well. I mean, we've seen some games recently where it looked like Rain was never being used the way that you sort of want him to be used, and he had very bad score lines and was actually pretty much gone from some of the games that they've been playing phase, but this is not the case now. He's uh, stepping up really early on, and you can tell he's very aggressive. He's, he's running in and taking those fights. Perhaps they had a bit of a talk. Perhaps, um, you know, he was just trolling me yesterday, but after their match, um, I, w I went up to Rain. I asked him, I was like, why, you know, are, what's going on, man? You, you're like non-existent in the first half. What happened? He's just like, oh, I'm not playing in my spots. I'm not playing the way I want. And I'm just like, all right, fair enough. Maybe he had a chat with Kerrigan last night, like, hey, man, you need to give me a little bit more leeway here. Or maybe he was just trolling me. It's still possible. Rain is a bit of a troll. Can we see this? I'm wondering, does Rain? No, Rain throws no grenades. So that's a bit of a shame. Oh, there's, a, there's one coming in all the way from the back. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. that, that one that goes over the, the train tracks there, it pops right after they get the kill on Kiyoshima. That's a shame. Um, so who do you blame? The guy throwing the grenade or Kiyoshima for peeking before it pops? The Either way, that's timing. dangerous. I mean, fun thing to note here. Great replay, by the way. Yeah, that is nice. That's getting all the details right. Yeah, these things are really important because it, com it's, it very often comes down to really small things like that. It sounds easy enough, but sometimes it is mixed well boosted up there. Or actually just jumped up there. You don't need to be boosted. You can just make that jump yourself. Very well done, four on four. But still, this is a good start for FaZe. With whatever way you look at it now, they're doing a good job. There is actually a detail that I neglected to mention as well. This is a bit tough. This is kind of the same situation. Both of these teams, it's fun because Cloud9 and Tyloo played in the first game before this one, right? And that was in the lower match. FaZe Optic, this is a winner match. And um, FaZe actually played, or rather, hold on, who am I talking about here? Optic, rather, sorry, played versus Tylu on Overpass. And so that's a little bit of additional information, actually. The same argument that I was using where Tylu can, like, download Cloud9 because Cloud9 played Mirage. Maybe we're seeing a bit of the same here where Kerrigan has more information to go off of, you know, when it comes to Optic's setup because he saw them play it yesterday. I think that's absolutely true. And how did this round turn in favor? Well, it's still in favor of FaZe, but how did it get so close? 
Now Rush walking in with a 5-7. Carrigan right around the corner. He's already got the double kill. He's going to be showing the shadow first. He still gets that frag for the triple, saving his team just at the edge. But I actually think that point is exactly what Moses was also alluding to. You know, you end up playing the same team so many times and so much in a very short sort of time span. Yeah. It's very hard to stay on top, you know. If you win, m a lot of the time, what you will just say to yourself is, well, that's cool, we won, so then you move on. Whereas if you're the team losing, you think to yourself, how do we make sure that doesn't happen again? And you do much more work than the winning team most of the time. So um, you just got to play your game. I mean, that's, that's almost all you can do, right? I would expect, you know, Optic to have just a little bit more of a head start than Cloud9 do right now. I mean, it seems like Stanislaw is kind of fitting into that in-game leader role perhaps able to get a little bit more of, of an adjustment made from map to map if they need to change things, if they actually need to make adjustments. Still, it's a 5-0 lead right now for FaZe on the T side of Overpass, and Stanislaw going aggressive with the AWP, a double AWP setup in this round for Optic Gaming. So really hoping to get something out of this, but he's looking towards Monster and he finds nothing. Nobody really there. FaZe, in the meantime, they're looking towards mid. Perhaps another A execute in the books here. In the books, rather. I'm sure there's an accent out there where it could be like books. Books. <laughs> book. Wait, how do you say it in, in Danish again? Book? <laughs> let's, let's, not, let's not go and there. Book and book. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it later, I promise. Rush hasn't got any kills yet. Zero, zero, and five. Phase ready to move up onto this A bomb side. They've cleared out everything. They've still got 45 seconds left. Then they bring the bomb back, and I'm worried about how much time this is taking here. If they get close to 30, that's where it's just going to be too much time wasted. I think there's even a boost going on on the A bomb side, so they can sort of see them over the smoke once they get in here. Yeah, you see Tarek looking over that fence, but he doesn't get the kill that he needed, and now they have to run through the smokes right into the flashbangs. Tarek under a lot of pressure. He still picks up the one kill, but it might not be enough. Carrigan gets the refrag as well on that fly now. With 18 seconds left, Rain going to try and put down the bomb here. Three on four. This is great, and Kyushima's covering the back line. They're doing a really good job, FaZe. Yeah, everything is covered at this point for FaZe. Now it's just a matter of hitting their shots when Optic try and go for the retake. If they do, two AWPs, not the best weapons to be going for a retake with. Kind of asked for FaZe to kind of step out in the open, and Mixwell, he's even thinking about backing off, but Stanislaw finds a shot on Rain. Brings it back to a three on three. It doesn't seem like it's going to be enough here for Optic. They're going to tap out. Too much yeah. time is ticked off that bomb, and they only have a single kit on Rush. If he were to die in an awkward spot, it would pretty much throw the round out of whack. Yeah, they just can't do it. The early fight there, I think the boost, this is a problem, right? Having that boost is so good if you get the first kill, but you see the problem occurring immediately when they don't, and then they're behind the smoke wall, and when he ran through, he ran right into a flashbang. It's impressive that he even got the kill, but still, it's it, they needed to do more than that. Five and oh, six and oh, sorry, for FaZe here. And Kerrigan is clocking it at 10, zero, and one. Yeah, he's Captain definitely, Kerrigan. He's definitely leading. Kerrigan, it always feels like Overpass has been a strong map for Kerrigan. Even when he first, I mean, this is obviously throwing it way back. But even when he threw, when he first uh, joined Astralis, right, took over that in-game leader role, he was always just taking point in the rushes with the Tech-9. It was obscene, actually, how many kills he was able to find with the Tech-9. But uh, he was always taking point. It always seemed like he was kind of hitting that comfort zone on this map. Still, it's been a long time, but he's still got it, it looks like. 6-0 lead for FaZe. And still, because if they kept both AWPs alive and, a, and an M4, they actually have a pretty reasonable buy going into this seventh round optic. Only really three players with grenades, though. That is kind of worrisome. And Alu holding the corner catches Stanislaw. Stanislaw going for the same peak. He wasn't spotted doing it last round, so he's just going to repeat. And this time around, Alu's ready and waiting for him. AC knows there's someone there. Carrigan, bit of a grenade in to push Naf fly back. They really want to take this connect to control, but Rain is not going to help them from the other side. It's all on them here. They win that fight easily. The Danish duo coming out and taking down Tarragon Nafly, leaving Rush alone on the bomb site. He's not had a great game so far. No kills yet, and it could be difficult to find one here, but he will pick up Kyushima. Now the rest of the team is coming in. Not really Rush's uh, fault that they couldn't push past that. Mix well to save the AWP. At least he avoids the James Bond. That is a good point. I mean, both Nafly and it's, him have avoided the James Bond. It's close. It's but definitely close. They've def you know, they've, they've, they decided, you know, being a secret agent isn't for me. They got flunked out of school. Perfect. <laughs> one of those one of those days. Well, definitely one of those days where, at least in Russia's case, I mean, Nafly, we don't really look to him to lead the charge. But in Russia's case, I mean, the analysts 
everybody really kind of looks to, to him as one of the key players on this team on Optic, along with Tarek and Mixwell. Between the three of them, you really expect a lot of work to get done. Now Mixwell, he will survive, at least for now, takes down the shot on Kerrigan. I don't think that Alu has completely given up on this, even though this means that he would be risking his own AWP. He's going to be running right behind Mixwell. Is there going to be enough time? There's the shot, and it's Rain to get it. Nice save there in the end. FaZe not giving Optic anything to work with in this round. Yeah, that's very, very important. Um, actually, if they'd saved that AWP, they could have had a pretty good buy going into this round now. It's just a bit weird, you know. And I think we do have a timeout being called for Optic. So, yeah, I mean... It's true that we've seen great performances out of Russia in the past, but Netfly certainly put on sort of some pretty good stuff himself, and the, both of those people are completely absent. They have one kill each, and that's in seven rounds. Obviously not enough. I'm, yeah, I'm worried for Optic, and it's it's true that it's probably easier for FaZe to win this fight just because of the history and how much they played each other, so Carrigan for sure has been doing his homework, but there's also just... Seems like Optic is having an, a very slow start for some of their players. Uh, I mean, baseline here, both of these teams are up 1-0. And just to remind you how the Swiss format is going to work, it's three wins, you're through to the major, three losses, you're out. But both of these teams, and how things will work as well, once you get that 1-0, you only face teams that have got 1-0 in the second day. And so now this is who's going to get 2-0 and who's going to go down to 1-1. So far, Rain <laughs> gets the headshot on Rush. This is an eco round coming in from Optic, but Rage shows no mercy. Another kill for him. Nafly finally steps into the fight and is able to return the kill, but it's still a man advantage for FaZe going onto the site. Oh, they actually grouped up right on top of each other. AC could have gone down there as well. Stanislaw picks up one. Nafly with a kill, and now Kerrigan. Can he save the day once again? A headshot working out, and another one coming in for the double. Kerrigan just unstoppable right now. 13 0 and 2. He's doing such a lot of work. You see in the middle doing the talking there as well. That's got to inspire a lot of confidence. 8-0. That was a chance for Optic to eco phase. That would have been great. It would have been monstrous. And another big clutch for Kerrigan, who's at 13-0-2 right now. Okay, then. Kerrigan definitely doing work. I mean, it's not even like we're going to look at Kyushima. Like, Kyushima, you only got two kills right now. Oh, yeah, your team is up 8-0. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> it's not the end of the world that he's trailing right now. 8-0. Double AWP setup once again here for Optic. I mean, if you look at his position as well, Kiyoshima, in some of these rounds early on, he's just holding the back line. He's not meant to get kills in this position. He just has to stay alive and make sure that no one's going to be sneaking up behind him. So he is playing a bit of a boring role right now. It is interesting when it comes to Kyo as well. I mean, the evolution, right? Now that he's willing to take more of a, of a kind of flank role, a bit of a taco role, I'd say, on overpass, you know, holding over by Monster, not really taking point in some of these fights when, you know, he's in general wanted to be the guy who's going in second, third, getting into the fray, getting into the fight. That was a nice flashbang that Rain set up for the peak then, so that Alu could get out and take the fight with Mixwell. Otherwise, he would have walked right into the scope, so... The teamwork right now for FaZe, I mean, these are all really basic things. And we saw what happened with you missed the timing down at B. This time, they hit the timing perfect. Now, Mixwell, he's holding close with Tarek behind him. This is a very, very dangerous position to be in. Mixwell swapped out for the M4, so they've, they've tried to just change up the rifles. Alu going to get the kill on Tarek. Mixwell all alone in the world with 30 bullets. Actually, just 18. He hasn't even reloaded yet. There are a lot of people behind this wall, and now they're coming for him, and he doesn't get a single one ring to win that first spray battle. Nafly, now is the time to step it up, because otherwise you'll fall into the mix as well. They're running right at him. Taking a good time, though. Carrigan will finally go down. Nafly following up on Alu. This is what they need. There's Rush coming into play as well. Naf with the third kill. And Kiyoshima goes down. Quad kill for Naf. And Optic find their first round. I actually, I'm really confused about why FaZe slowed that down so much. Because they just got the first two kills flawlessly. And there's one person left on the bomb site. Why don't you just run him over as well? Why not just run him down? I'm more in awe of Naf and this ridiculous round playing it perfectly. FaZe missed their chance when they had like three guys facing him with AKs, but after that, he just only ever peeks one person at a time, just plays but, around those boxes perfect. They allow, they give him that, you know? They say you can have all the space to work with because we're just going to stay at a comfortable distance so you can easily take the battle against us. You know, mm -hmm. it's just meaningless. It, it wasn't, I mean, it was like 10 seconds into that standoff when Alu finally pulled out his incendiary, his Molotov, and was about to get the Molotov down on boxes to force him into the open. Sure enough, Nafly peeks, kills Alu before he can get the nade off. 
I just, I can't even explain why they wouldn't do it because it was only after the first kill that Rush showed up. And then, you know, maybe they would have had a reason to sort of say, all right, now there are more people on the bomb side, we need to slow down a bit. Right. But when they get the first two kills, they know there's only going to be one person left there. And I don't know. That was a, yeah, that was a miscalculation from FaZe and it cost them. Perhaps that's why uh, Kerrigan chose to go for the timeout there. Kerrigan, definitely an in-game leader who likes to use his timeouts. So you have four of them, he's used one. But maybe, you know, he's just like, all right, settle down, guys. You know, that round didn't go our way, fair enough. <sighs> well, I love it, the teamwork and the leg shot. Well, no, the wall bang onto AZ as well. Unfortunately, the HE goes just a little bit too far, but Naf... Oh. What? Oh, 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 oh. Get wrecked, AZ. Get out, Nafly is here, he's waking up. He's certainly waking up. We just talked about him having only one kill in seven rounds. Now he's up to nine. He's topping the scoreboard on uptick in just a couple of rounds. I didn't know that Naf was French. You know, showing up fashionably late to the party. Took him a while. Had to stop off, get a bottle of wine first. But now he's here. Have Definitely the life of it. Alu, Rain, and Kiyoshima left. This round is about doing damage. The uptick economy is still really bad. But if they come out of this round flawlessly, that's going to give them a way to get right back in the game here. Tarek and Mixwell holding close again. That similar setup as the last round. Flashbang here, Rain. He hears that. He hears the steps as well. Is he going to go for the fight? They practically line up, but it isn't enough for them. Now, Alu, AWP, maybe get one kill, but no Nafly there to cancel that adventure. So 10 kills for Nafly in the space of just a couple of rounds here. Really well done, this, this kill. He doesn't care. Just get out. <laughs> He's definitely waking up here, Naf. Maybe I spoke to, maybe, maybe it's like the counter caster curse where I was like, he'll surely never have a game like that again. He's like, just you wait, Zeppler. You know what? I'll give, I'll even give them an eight round lead or an eight round head start. That's how good I am. Well, we know from, from watching Cloud9 on day one that even a 10-1, you know, start is not enough to save you. You can <laughs> still, I mean, that is a lesson that's worth, you know, just remembering because you've got to be feeling great still of your phase, but you can't start the celebration early. Got to keep fighting and push all the way through here. They can buy in this round, but they lose Kerrigan very early on. And if they lose this round, they're going to be ecoing. So a lot rides on this. Attempted shoulder peek coming out of AC with the, Mac or is it with the Tech 9 there. Try to see if we could trick someone into fighting him early on. Tarek actually burning and running right into AC. I have no idea how easy didn't win that fight. Sick fight from Tarek, though. That's just, you know, you only way forward. Only one way, rather, and it's forward. Kiyoshima's going to catch down Naf, and he's going to take down Tarek as well. And he's done so much work in this round for someone who's been fairly quiet so far. Gets another kill. Not going to be able to take down Rush. But three kills from Kiyoshima brings his team right back into this round. With a minute left on the clock, this is ample time now to rotate that bomb through mid, get it over towards A, especially because Rain is in control of the site already. So all, all he has to do is continue, well, just follow his teammate. Goes through long. Going to be able to walk right up here. Yeah, this is smart play from Rain to clear out the bomb site before Alu could get there. And question is if Rush can do anything to bring this back. One on two for him. He's been quiet as well. Now would be the perfect time for a clutch. Alu has to make that crossover in to actually get the plant in. He makes the noise and now Rush here is going to come out of the bank. He gets the kill, but Rain will be there. Good refrag on him. 9-2. That resets the optic economy. I mean, they could try and force it. In fact, when you're this far behind, maybe you just should. Mm. Yeah, a bit surprising, actually, to see the replay there. Naf clearly not uh, aware that nobody had control of sewers. Nobody cleared out sewers. He definitely assumed that they were going to be moving in for monster. Maybe trying to play off of Kiyoshima. Kiyoshima has been holding very passive monster, T-spawn monster, you know, this entire map so far nearly. So, a mm. bit of a, a mistake that actually ends up costing them. But I guess he's going to get to keep the op. I mean, this is one of the details, actually. Mixwell, he's even expressed this in interviews in the past, you know, the, the fact that... Uh, when he doesn't feel like you know he's hitting with the op, he just hands it off. He's not one of those oppers who's just going to stay on the AWP no matter what. Look at Kyo. He's in this L bend really early on. That's that's hard for Rush to predict. He's walking all the way in. Rush turning around the timing, and somehow Kyoshima not even bothering to check the lens. That's just a mystery. Rush picking up two great kills with it from RC. Hasn't reloaded yet, has to be careful, but I think he spotted out the player on on Elben there, and he gets a third one. Just a miraculous round coming out of Rush. The timing, it could have been awful, but it wasn't. He finally goes down to Alu, but still too late here for the finished player. Grenade, not going to do too much, but he's in a 1v3, and they know exactly where he is. So Optic, 
They did force it. It wasn't the worst force in the world here, but they did force it, so they would have ecoed if they lost it. Mm -hmm. Are looking good at the moment. It's just it's just surprising considering I mean I already pointed it out at the beginning. This is a very this is one of Optic's go to kind of setups on the C T side to hold B is to have them crossfire at Monster and Rush is watching short. So for Kiyoshima not even to look towards Monster at all. Interesting decision on his part, but sometimes it happens. Bit of a mistake that ends up costing him here in this round because Alu's only got the 33 HP and he's hoping, he's waiting for somebody to overextend on this to go for the peak. He's only got the 23 seconds left in the round, however, to get up here and get that bomb planted. Full set of nades for him as well, so we'll see if he decides to use a smoke. Perhaps he goes to space, but it doesn't even matter. Tarek, gonna get the headshot on him. 9-3. Faze still with a terrific lead, no matter what. Even if Kiyoshima's making mistakes, it doesn't matter because they have such a huge lead going into this, but Optic by themselves, another chance. Yes, they do. That's Rush on the camera there. Very good job on him to pick up those three kills. Um, nice transition. Love it. Everybody loves that one. Love it. 9-3 is the scoreline. The double orb is in play once again for Optic Gaming. And everyone started to creep up on the board. You know Rush is there as well. Tarek a bit lower than everybody else, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Optic just need to keep the grind here. They need to keep going and never stop because they need all three rounds they can get in the rest of this half. And look at the charge coming in. Tech Nines to the B-bomb side. Stanislaw there to pick up a great double kill and then Rush to follow it up. AC alone. He's going to get a kill, but it won't matter. He goes down to the end of Tarek. 9-4. A big risk for FaZe. and doesn't really work out. Now what? Yeah, now what? Exactly. I, mean, I guess this is Ker this is Kerrigan also playing off of that lead, right? Like I said in the last round where, you know, it's not the end of the world if you're making a few mistakes. You've got a 9-4 scoreline on T-side overpass. And you still have a chance to turn it into 10-5, right? So go for the gamble. We'll see if you can really crack it open. It doesn't work this time. And Optic will be allowed to kind of close the gap just a little bit more. But even if it goes 9-6, Optic are still way far behind. So we'll see. Phase, they have everything now. It's almost, it, it feels like it's their game to lose at this point with this scoreline. It is going to come up to some big plays. And there you go. Mixwell with the shot on Rain. That's a nice start. That's a feel-good moment. Yeah, very well done. And I agree, it is phase uh, game to lose right now, but if they lose the next two rounds here, it's 9-6. If they lose the pistol in the second, if, if Optic win the pistol in the second half, mm -hmm. then it's probably 9-9. Nine, nine. And at that point, phase must be rattled, you know? So I still think there's a definite chance for Optic to get back in the game here. Focus is key right now. And those timeouts are important, you know? Well, at least they get a bomb plan in this situation, right? So they have that to go off of. They're going to have that bonus money going into the next round. That bonus 800. So there is that. Uh, Mixwell just wrecking house right now. Another three kills for him. Definitely looking good. So they're getting warmed up here on Optic. That does bode well. Moving into the last round of the half. The 15th is coming up here. And the money with the bomb plant there, actually quite important. They needed that bomb plant to, to be able to fully kit out everyone with grenades and everything. So, not at all bad, the $800 bonus. Let's see if FaZe can get one more round in. All right. The fans are certainly ready for it. And, I mean, this is one thing that is fun. It seems like whenever Optic play, um, the Optic fans are tuning in, they're ready for it. The hashtags and everything, the green wall, certainly turning up. I quite like that. I think it's, uh, it's something that we sometimes are missing a bit in, in Counter-Strike. There are the there are the teams that have it. NIP certainly have a pretty strong exactly. fan base. That was like, well, even like back in the day, it was telling. Whenever NIP played, just so many viewers tuning in. Yeah. Right? They had a massive fan base. Nine to five, and a bit of a different setup. You see Kyushima and Alu both outside of the B-bomb side this time, and looks like they're clearing out Connector. Mm -hmm. Once they have that and Suez, I'm wondering if we're not just gonna see sort of a regular B-execute here coming out of phase. Rush and Stanislaw in the same kind of setup. Again, Rush holding close short, Stanislaw just monster. And turned away as well, waiting for the flash to come through. But this will be phase going for the split B, it looks like. Bomb is ready, all five players here. Kerrigan setting up for the smoke onto uh, Sniper, onto Upper. And Stanislaw is now rotated back, so they're adapting here, Optic. They're trying to change it up to make sure that FaZe can't take too much advantage of it. Kerrigan with the Molotov on a Toxic, and that's gonna be the ghost signal. The flashers are through, and Rain taking point. Not yet found anybody, and Rush hits the headshot. So many flashbangs all over the place, and the Molotov as well. Rush, not a chance there. Tarek and Mixwell, two on four. And they have no chance to save, obviously. It's the last round. Mixwell trying to get some sort of shot in, but he goes down to Kerrigan. And Tarek 
one on four, hiding in the smoke on the other side. He's gonna get the one kill, and that's a good job, but I don't think it'll be anything else here. Gets the one with the Tech-9, follows it up, takes down AZ. How is he not dead yet? Alu on the other side, tearing his edge on! You've got to be kidding, he picks up four kills! That's impossible! How does he wreck? <laughs> I'm almost like, yes, go to the Tech-9, please! I mean, who needs a rifle when you have the Tech-9? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that is actually not doable. Who needs a rifle? It's all good, man. Tech-9, I got bullets for days, and they do so much damage! Look at this. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just actually cannot believe it. Boom. Ah. And he's had such a slow game as well, Tarek. It's really not been his. But he picks up a quad kill at the end. It puts himself in. Look at the reaction. <laughs> my God, Samla, what are we witnessing here? That's my mildly frustrating. Mildly, I would say. Well, I mean, if you are trying to pave the way to a major tournament, then these are the sort of plays that you need every once in a while. Unreal. 9-6 is the finish. Now, let's just not get carried away. These, they are still really, really far behind here, Optic. If they lose the pistol, it's still almost impossible for them to win. Not impossible, but it's going to be tricky for them to try and win it. I mean, I think a lot of it... <sighs> Roban is taking advantage of it. So it's similar, it's similar to the situation that we saw from Tyloo, actually, where the coach is extending the, uh, the break because this is one of the few times that he'll actually get to talk to the players, not able to communicate to, to them during the rounds, only during freeze time and during... Um, well, during halftime, basically, and during timeouts. So Robon has a few things to say, getting their heads back into the game here, because that is a kind of round that'll tilt your team off the face of the planet, for sure. Where you're just like, come on, we just lost a 1v4. It's surely got to, right? It's not even just that it's the 1v4. It's that it's the stupidest 1v4 of all time. He's in a corner in this. He smoked out of that bomb site, and they know where he is. It's just like... <laughs> Take fights one after another. I mean, yeah, but even... I don't know. I just can't even explain it. <laughs> I just don't want to think about it. 16th round is coming up. The halftime break is done with. And Optic, a, I think it must win pistol round for them. I think it's, that's not too much to say here. They have invested into a smoke on Rush, and that's pretty much it. Everybody else has armor, so curious to see what they can come up with here. One smoke, a couple of flashbangs. It could be either bombsite. One smoke is not a dead giveaway as to what it's going to be. So we'll just wait and figure it out as we go along here. Alu with an early peek to put some damage into Rush, but he's not going to contest it for much longer. Instead, Rain going to have to fall back from that position as well. And in fact, look at how fast they're being right now. Rush is still quite far behind. They actually flashed in. Look at this. It's like a Glock train. That is where the whole sort of the way in front of them is paved by Rush and that one flashbang. That's interesting. Now they're all going to congregate towards the B bomb site. The train just keeps on going. They're going to reconnect with Nafly down here. But look at FaZe. They have three men already on the site waiting. Kiyoshima has gone. Ace, he's gone. I guess it doesn't matter how many men you have waiting when that happens. Carrigan next in line. Rain to fall. And a flawless round from Optic Gaming. That was the, that was the full circle. It was they definitely actually, a bit more structured than what we saw from God since Pistol Round yesterday on an overpass. We'll put it that way. They actually just ran a whole marathon over to Long and then all the way through Connector into the B-bomb site where Naf was ready and waiting. That I mean, that's just a crazy way to play around. That's, uh, that, yeah, and it's not just because, I mean, that's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. They're going for kills. They're looking to just run as a unit, but then they wind up on the site and hit it together. Whereas yesterday with Godsend, it was mainly just because they kind of fluffed it. So it, it turned into chaos and they ran all around the map. Optic definitely looking a little bit more polished on the T side. Definitely fired up off of uh, the one before clutch from Tarek to end that first half. So it's 9-7 Optic, two rounds behind, but they've got the rifles you can see and two UMPs as well. Whereas FaZe, unlike Optic, Optic elected to save and not go for Kevlar in the second round so they could have more grenades because FaZe won the pistol round in the first half. Faze are going for the Kevlar. They're not They're not going to care about the nades when it comes to the fourth round. Only Alu kind of saving money so that he can get that AWP. Seems like teams are split on the sort of theory behind this, you know? Some teams will buy no armor and not even maybe that many pistols just to try and get the maximum buy out of that fourth round like you're talking about. And mm -hmm. some teams will do what Faze are doing now. We'll see what pays off. They certainly have an interesting setup over here by the birthday connector party area. And we'll see if... Um, 
they can make anything off it. They're ready to jump out a lot of people if, if anything happens. They get three people out really early on and rain. Great headshot. Now he's trying to pick up the rifle. Not going to be allowed. Yeah, they actually need to be careful about that because that was one of the rifles they got dropped there. So somebody like Naf, Naf or Rush should rotate back to pick ah. it up. Nice whip there from Stanislaw with the 180. Kiyoshima obliterates Nafly though. The drive-by. Gonna just go ahead and take the fight with Tarek and lose it promptly. But they're not gonna be able to save one of the rifles now, unfortunately, for them. Rush is running up. Maybe, nope, not even, nowhere near. So they've actually lost a rifle. That's painful. It's all in the details here, but you much rather you lose two of the UMPs. You don't care about those. They cost you 1200 so, you know, losing a $2,700 AK, though, that's, that's a bit of a big deal. It's going to take a bite out of your economy, which is definitely what Optic do not want to do right now. I think Rain could pull off a samurai look, don't you think? Could someone, could someone Photoshop him into, like, a samurai? He just always looks so zen, you know, He does focused. look, I think it's the focus as well. And obviously the man bun as well. Hashtag E-League and send us your, your, your Rain photoshops. I'd love to see I that. I thought you were going to go with a different angle there, like send us photos of your man buns. But <laughs> <laughs> you can do that too if you, if you Actually, want. Actually, send them to Anders. Just send them <laughs> to Anders. Why not? Why not at this point? Norwegian samurai. It's an interesting mix. Um, speaking of mixed wells, he's leading the charge into the B-bomb site. That was cheap. And Nafly <laughs> is winning by Stuart. Um, they're not going to find anyone here. They're using all these grenades, and there's not any, anyone to receive them. That's sad. And look at the phase. Are on a they're on a sort of a company excursion all the way over to the T spawn. Oh, what is that shot from the USP? Taking down Tarek. Probably not every day that happens. Rush with a UMP in a good position here. They don't have armor. They are getting decimated. And worse, now they're actually giving up a lot of kills to those SMGs. This is not what you want to be doing if you're phased. It's almost just like run away from the SMGs, find Stanislaw Law and die to him because you just gave so much money. $600 per kill with the SMGs. That's the whole point. That's why you go for the SMGs in these anti-ecos. You're getting double the money pretty much. So a bit of a, bit of a sad turn of events there for phase at the end, but still, they're focused on this round. Nice buy coming in here from AZ, but Rain, Kerrigan, you know, he's going to have a flash and a smoke. Or the kit, yeah, he has to go for the kit because nobody else has the money to go for the kit. This is why there's that discussion between, you know, do you yeah. go for Kevlar in the second round or not? What we saw from Optic, Rush had the only kit, but they had full nades backing it as well. FaZe, you can see they have to skimp everywhere. And wouldn't you know it, the prophecy has come true. Now we're back at 9-9 nine nine based off Optic winning that pistol round. This is... I mean, it should be still a favor for FaZe, but like we've been talking about, they've just lost six rounds in a row or something like that. It's hard to keep the momentum. I mean, three here in the second half, but I think they, they lost the last three in the first half, right? So Oof. overall, actually four in the first half at the end there. So they've got to be feeling just, uh, just a bit uncomfortable right now. Yeah, you're right. No, this is just a bit, uh, this is this is definitely a little bit frustrating considering FaZe had to fight tooth and nail yesterday versus Cloud9 on Mirage. It went over past one of the few, I mean, it went over past, went over time rather, one of the few maps we've had go over time so far in these two days of games. So FaZe, it hasn't been an easy passage here. If they start to feel like they're going to have to claw their way back into this, it, it could be Optic just running away with it. Yeah, especially because so many of the members of Optic now have really come alive. In the beginning, Rush and Nafly had one kill each, and that was seven rounds in now. They're at 13 and 14. They've just sort of, I mean, somehow they've just woke up immediately. That's very hard to do as a player individually. It's one thing if the whole team isn't working, but if you're the one sort of making, oh, that's a classic Alu type flick. Very well done. That was sick. Mix well taken out. Strong kill for Alok now. Can he get another one? He knows they're coming and somehow doesn't get it. I just have no idea how that works out. Rain now onto the site, trying to see if he can maybe deny the plant. Now Fly picking another kill. Going to go down eventually. Rain with a double. He's down to five health, but he can't get the third one in there. Still a two on two, and Stan is right there, spraying through, nearly catching Kyo. The bomb is ticking away. One on two, and Stannis Law goes down. AC to clean up the round and phase. They buy the rifles, they win the round. There we go. It's all part of the plan. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, exactly. They buy, the, they buy the rifles. Yeah, it's funny how that works out. It's the recipe, right? I mean, but more importantly, I mean, AZ, yes, in the retake, but Alu, I mean, I'm just going to give it to Alu for that first shot, the fact that he draws so much attention over to himself that when this push actually begins, sets it up for Rain to just kind of camp behind the boxes, collect two kills like this, and that just throws everything on its head for Optic after that. AZ, though, that's a clean shot. Well, yeah, clean enough. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's important they win that 1v2 at the end. Uh, they still do lose a lot of members, and because Optic have all their money from the SMGs earlier, they can buy. So I would say FaZe, they, they're not out of the woods. They've just bought themselves another round to fight in here. Uh, still have to keep going. The money would be broke for Optic more or less in the next round. A big, big bank on Rush, in fact. 5,000, but still. Yeah, they could go for a hero op even if, they, even if they wanted to try and change things up. Four players waiting outside of B right now. This is interesting. Considering, well, the bomb is dropped all the way over by Connector. Mixwell is actually working his way back over there right now to go ahead and pick up that bomb, it looks like. Stanislaw was holding outside along to see if there was going to be any kind of aggression coming out from FaZe Clan, but that's not the case. It seems like right now the, the, the game plan make a lot of noise over here early on, perhaps force FaZe to make some kind of play over towards A. Because Rush and Mixwell are now clearing out Connector, so they're going to have that avenue open. Rain is waiting in restroom, though. Yeah, and this is so. This is really smart play from Rain and Alu because they can keep the three-man stack at, at B as long as Rain can keep this forward position. If Rain has to fall back, they may have to rotate someone into A instead. But this strong B defense is possible because Rain will have the early information, and he's hearing them right outside now. Gonna go for the spray, but Cousin Connect rush with a great shot, and Alu missing the flick, and now it pretty much all falls apart. Yep, because Nafli takes down AZ as well. Don't care about Kiyoshima. Now you don't even need to look for the fight versus Kiyoshima. This is just gravy. Nafli looking to get a little greedy over here. But that bomb is rotating towards B. Still, three players about to get over here. Kerrigan takes down Tarek. That was up on A, though, so it's still the core. Stanislaw makes well on Rush. They've got 27 seconds to get onto the B site, and Kiyoshima catches them lined up. What is this obscenity? How does this happen? Now it's only Mixwell. 1v2, somehow Optic. They had every advantage. There we go. Mixwell finds one. Are you kidding? Come on! Okay, then. This is just boiling down in, in a couple of these rounds. It's just boiling down to who gets headshots at this point, because that's, that's again, Kerrigan should get that kill 100%. I don't know. This is the Counter-Strike Circus. They they should probably have lost that round up think, once Q gets the, the double kill, yeah. and then they still turn it around, but it should have never been in this position to begin with. I I don't know. Kiyoshima trying his very best. I mean, that's an impressive, it's a good positional play. But it's also just keeping his cool, and you see the reaction there. It's disappointment all over. That puts FaZe back on pistols and armor, and not much else here. Optic dodging a bullet right now. Ice, big one, right? That was uh, that was a real chance there for FaZe. A little bit of the hang of the head from Keo, because he knows they, they were definitely in a position to turn this around, FaZe. Now it's tied up 10-10, but it's definitely not even as far as the equipment is concerned. Pistols for FaZe. And again, Optic are content to sit and wait, look for that aggression coming out of FaZe. Tough call there for Alu as well in that round. I mean, Rain gets his head taken off by Rush, but Alu had an opportunity to really get a kill there and kind of slow things down for Optic in mid, and it just didn't happen. So the flicks are flashy, but he needs to he needs to hit these shots, Alu, right now. He needs to have an impact yeah. with that op. No, it's true. And I mean, yesterday he was playing out of his mind, wasn't he? Yeah. But, um, it was God Alu who showed up, yeah, not Yeah, it was bot. very impressive, but he needs to get back to that form. He's actually the bottom of the scorpion with seven kills, so definitely needs to do much better at the, right now. Call a mechanic or an engineer. <laughs> Anything like that. Nav gonna close check that corner. Kerrigan actually running him down with a pistol, but he's alone. And about to be sandwiched in. He picks up one, gets another one, goes for the third. He can't quite get it. That's a quad kill for Kerrigan. He nearly cleans up all of Optic. This game, just we can take nothing for granted anymore. It's Kerrigan at 21 kills. It's Tarek at 90. I don't even know how Tarek ended up at the top of the scoreboard. He just slowly clawed his way back up there. But now, 11-10. Optic with the round lead. FaZe without any money at all. It could be the big comeback here. They have 40 seconds left. Smokes, flashes, all their nades. What are they doing running in there at 1v1? Are they trying to do a phase impression? <laughs> hey, come on. Hey, it is NA Counter-Strike, man. Let's, let's not take that away from them. Yeah, it's, it, that's tough. I mean, right, this is like both of these teams right now, it's like the nerves are basically kicking in on both of them because they're both making mistakes, not keeping their cool. You know, they need to just focus up and keep their cool at this point. 11 to 10, and FaZe still, still echoing. So Optic get a chance, but they took so much damage last round. That, that last round was supposed to be just smooth sailing, build up the economy, recover from a couple of close rounds before, you know, just build it up again. And now, well, Optic don't even have that much of a bank to fall back on. Look at this stack. 
Four men in the B-bomb site. Kerrigan is pushing up in connector. He knows no one is there. Oh, they're going to fall back. The timing, please. <laughs> they think it's an A push. That Kerrigan is probably calling it in, saying there's no one here. They're probably all out by up. the playground now. Oh, they're going to turn around. They, they hear the grenades. Can they get back in position? Nap going to go for the spray. Picks up one, the return from Rain. So four on four. Terry maybe overextending. He's going to go down to Rain as well. And here comes Kerrigan rushing in behind. He's going to pick up the one. Goes for more Kerrigan. He gets a triple kill. And they win the round phase. How is this happening? These rounds. This is unbelievable. They were rotating out of that B bomb site. If Optic delayed that first grenade by even three more seconds, then FaZe can't get back into position. This is unbelievable. 24 kills on Carrigan. Hmm. We're gonna see the monster smoke coming out. It's gonna bounce off the rail. Actually a smoke that Carrigan himself uh, improved from the sort of original one. Um, Carrigan came up with a new way of doing it. Um, so, kind of interesting. Just try and stop any rush from going in there in case they were going to go for a Tech 9 type rush. That wouldn't be quite as easy if there's a smoke in there. Mixwell's gone down in this round, and now FaZe, I, suddenly they're in a great position. If they win this round that you can tell I'll take a forced into, then. They could almost win the game. It's going to get real close for uptick. Oh, yeah. Now, this is where FaZe now get a second chance. Third, fourth, fifth chance. I mean, <laughs> it's back and forth right now, but it's definitely FaZe with the edge. They have the nade advantage here in this round. They have the rifles as well. This is a bit of a, an awkward buy coming out here from optic, but optic are definitely hoping to be able to turn this around. Two AKs, two pistols, couple of nades to work with. 50 seconds left on the clock as well. And th three players up on A. Three players up on A. Interesting here from FaZe. Kerrigan with the long peak. Nobody going to be there, but there's still Alu and Rain set up with a crossfire. Oh, Kerrigan. Everything rides on this. Uh, He's going to get the one kill. That's maybe not quite good enough. Gives away an M4 to Nafly. He's going to come pick it up any second now. Not sure that's worth it now. Alu. He needs to step up here again. It's been a bit of an awful match for him so far. Hasn't found any comfort zone over here, and he's gonna shoot right between them. Get taken down by Tarek, still on the bomb site. Rain is ready and waiting to drop Tarek. Now only 15 seconds, and Rain, on the other hand, has been having a very, very good game for himself. 18 kills right now, and only 10 seconds for Stanislaw. Yeah, where Stanislaw, I mean, there is a world where he can try and save this AK and stay alive, but um, it's not an ideal one, and to be frank, yeah, he should really not be peeking these angles. No, just stay Obviously, alive at this point. Don't want to go down after the time has run out. That's the worst, uh, worst thing that can happen. 12-11. It's been such a back and forth match. It started out with FaZe winning eight rounds in a row and everything was great. They were looking so good. And then Optic just embarked on a massive comeback and somehow it seems like maybe they're running out of steam a tiny bit. They're all doing so well. There's nobody in Optic who's underperforming right now. They're all doing a great job. But FaZe have that one massive fragger in Carrigan who's just continuously putting rounds in. And then Rain as the support really put, backing him up. But if Carrigan wasn't doing what he is right now, then probably Optic would be winning it. Absolutely. I mean, the, obviously, the eco clutch there at the end. That's that's the big turning point. Just like Tarek with the one before at the end of the first half, I, you know you have these high impact rounds that keep coming through, and I guess it was only fair that FaZe should get one, that Kerrigan should be able to pull it off, considering he had lost the clutch to Mixwell in the round before that, pretty much. So tough, uh, tough scenarios, just back and forth. Again, scrappy between both of these teams, just like it was between uh, Cloud9 and Tyloo in the match before this on Mirage. There is the hero AK on Stannis Law, but it will be Rush who picks up the kill with the Tech 9. They don't have any armor on anyone outside of Stan, and he's out of the round, so pretty easy kills coming in here for Alu and Carrigan to close out the round. Make it 13 11. And moving into the 25th round. Let's see how this one goes. Optic have the money. Finally, they can actually buy something. And what are they going to try for? Are they going to keep the same pace? I would kind of love to see them try and swap it, switch it out here, really be aggressive in this round. They don't have the AWP, so they don't have any reason to creep around the map. But they even have Stanislaw could lead the charge with the Tech-9. Yeah, change of pace I think would be nice for Optic. Let him just go in full swinging. 
Yeah, but you can already tell that's not going to happen. I mean, th as soon as Naf breaks off and goes outside of B, that's a clear indication that you'll have a much slower round. And they're waiting really far back. They're afraid that FaZe are going to come and fight them. Oh, I see what happened. I was wondering how Alu got tagged down. I guess Naf went for a wall bang to short from T-Spawn. So Alu already got dusted up a little bit here. But still, very look at how compact they are right now, Optic. This is just a straight mid take now from them. Not even worried about a flank. Everybody looking towards mid at this point. Minute 10 on the clock and they're gathering up. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps they've identified that Alu's missing some shots, so they want to go ahead and say hi to him over on long. Yep. See if they can't catch him out over there. If that's a weak point, that could allow them to try and just go streaming onto the site once they've taken him down. It is a viable strategy here. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes perfectly sense. Try and bully the one player who's having a hard time. Alu and Rain are a bit of a duo over by the restrooms. So Carrigan is actually the one covering long now. And he's just spotting it. He's not even trying to really find anyone. And she wants to make sure that if they come, he can put down that Molotov and buy even more time for the rest of the rotation to come in. And speaking of time, down to 35 seconds. Now they're going to try and push their way in long. Three men running in. But the rest of the push still by the restrooms. Now they're running into CT spawn. And Carrigan goes down. What a great opening from Tarik. That's what they need. And they need more of it. Alu has to fall back. What is happening? They're just trading places inside the smoke. Mix one is still right behind them. And he's going to get the kill on one. Alu turning around. He doesn't know where Mixwell is. He's going to no-scope him anyway. And now, Stan and Tarek left. Two versus three. Because it is pretty hard to miss that shot, Alu. Point blank. You're going to get it in the end. Tarek decides to take the fight with AZ, and that's never a good idea, considering he's hitting all of his shots. And Stanislaw going to go for a Looney Tunes trace, the outline around Kyoshima. <laughs> Not going to happen, Anders. I'm thinking that FaZe, they're looking pretty good here. This is definitely going their way. Despite the chaotic turn of events there from Optic, it was very interesting. The fact that they get smokes down to block off mid, they've neatly cut off Rain and Alu from the site. Kerrigan is the only one there. You're right, that is a hard shot to miss. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> might as well have impaled himself on the op, let alone taking the shot. Tactical timeout for Optic Gaming. Uh, pretty good time for it. You are in a position where you can actually buy all AKs, but they wouldn't have, and I think that's what they're gonna do. They won't have very much utility. If there, were, if there was ever a round to go quick, then now is it. Because normally, if you want to play it slow, you at least want to have you know, more grenades to play around with, more of a setup and everything. I mean, they've got four smokes, so it's not the end of the world, but it's not the most impressive buy for sure. And right now, FaZe, they have a, this is a real problem. They have enough of a bank that if they lose this round, they can still go. Perfect. Right. That is very well done. That is impressive. Well done, well done, but. I mean, actually, I have no Photoshop skills, so I can't even tell if that's, you know, difficult or not. But either way, I appreciate the effort. Keep it coming. Especially if we can get one with the man bun. Mixwell and Tarek are outside. And actually, Kyushima and Alu pushing up fairly aggressively here. How dangerous is this going to get? Thought for a moment they were going to try and boost in to look it through the window, but they're keeping the cool at the moment. I'm not seeing anyone. Alu actually going to close the door and Mixwell. If Kyushima pushes in and he's in such a good position to get the kill. Another fairly slow round. Kiyoshima flash comes in, but doesn't blind mix well. And there's the spray blind. AC takes down one, but he can't get the kill on Tarek. Three versus four. Great start for Optic. Oh, but look at the quick rotation coming out here from FaZe. There's two players on the B side already. They might be thinking, hey, we've got a shot here, guys. We can get onto the B side for free. Not the case. All the one Kerrigan there to wreck dreams. And Kerrigan even shooting his own teammate. Come on, Kerrigan. Keep it cool. 45 seconds left on the clock. And Rain is spotted out standing top mid as well, even getting a little bit of wall bang damage onto him. All right, then Rain with the headshot, Tarek with the, with the Kobe nade, but still a 1v2 situation here for Tarek. Oh man, that grenade was one second too late. Now he's alone and he's being flanked as well. Kerrigan walking in from behind. I'm not going to say he can't do it because we've already seen Tarek, could, uh, Tarek just be a, a magician today, so better be careful here. 20 seconds left. He's not sure about the flank yet. He realizes Alu is somewhere down there. He's going to try for the bomb plant. And Kerrigan, seconds away from being in position, going to walk all the way out. There comes the grenade. Tarek looking for the shot, but he can't make it. Kerrigan instead now clocking in at 29 kills and putting FaZe at 15-11. I mean, this would be a big win for FaZe. They are primed. They got to see Optic play this map yesterday. They've definitely done their homework, but more importantly, they're about to break that Optic streak. And it's going to be another timeout here called from Optic. This is the last timeout that they can take, pretty much, so they might as well. It's their third one of this map. 
But, I mean, Optic have won the last four out of five times here versus FaZe. This is going to be a feel-good moment for Kerrigan if he can if he can get that win here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it sort of feels like he's been uh, he's been hunting for this game. Not only doing the in-game leading and the tactics and everything, but also doing the top fragging at the moment. 15-11 and another tactical timeout for Optic Gaming, who can buy. Thankfully, they got the bomb plan in and they had already the five round loss streak. So they will have plenty of money to buy in this round. And what's the plan though? They've lost five rounds in a row. That is not a good sign. The pressure is mounting for sure at this point. All right, this is, this is really where it starts to set in, but they've used their timeouts again. They actually have a reasonable buy. Kerrigan setting up the monster smoke once again. An aggressive mid pressure coming in here from FaZe. I mean, they don't go for the peak to top mid. But they are setting up a bit of a reception party over there, and instead they're not going to go ahead. And they're, they're just going to be sticking. They're not going to stick around. Rather, that's what I'm trying to aim for here. Instead, it's Alu pulling a mix well. Hits the shot on Stanislaw, and there's the man advantage for Phase. Now he's sticking around. Is that really wise? They have a four on five. They don't need to do that much. Alu going to hit the headshot on mix well, going for another one. That's a triple kill for the Finnish sniper. Sticking around made absolutely sense when he's going to get that many kills. Now Terrigan rush, two versus four. That is one hell of a way to close out a game, especially one that you've been underperforming in. What a time to step it up. He's actually overtaking Kyushima as well, so last couple of rounds, Alu been improving. Rush and Tarek need to win a 2v4, otherwise they're going to lose this game to FaZe. And obviously, I mean, I think especially because of how well Otto has been playing, everyone's expecting they will, make the, they will qualify for the Major, right? Maybe a question mark could be put at the side of that if they don't win this game. that and it's just a star performance from Kerrigan. Kind of tough to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that. Kerrigan with the guys backing him up. All with a remarkable play here. 30 seconds left in the round for Tarek to try and find an angle here. He might be able to catch out Kiyoshima, but Kiyoshima's turned the rifle away and so Tarek doesn't know he's holding close pillar. Kiyoshima's gonna find one and two. Strong end to it here for Kiyoshima and Alu, both bottom fraggers for FaZe Clan, but it doesn't matter. They've got the 16 rounds. 16 to 11, the final score.